Welcome to teacher training for children with disabilities. Every child is special. Each has his own learning style, behavior habits, and personality. Children with disabilities have an additional set of challenges unique to each child. Children with physical disabilities and mild cognitive disabilities learn well with our standard curriculum and might benefit from having a helper in the classroom with them. Children with significant cognitive disabilities often require an adapted setting where the transitions are more intentional and where many of the stories are taught over two lessons instead of one. Our adaptation for children with disabilities is a teacher's guide that will help you adapt the lesson to a contained classroom just for children with significant cognitive disabilities. These are children whose parents prefer to have their children in a special classroom adapted for children with cognitive disabilities. Know that some children in this class will need one-on-one -on -one supervision, so you will need helpers depending on the number of children attending. Download a teacher's guide for children with disabilities so you can follow along. You are free to use any or all of the elements and adapt them as you see fit. You will want to keep a teacher's journal for each child so you can track the way each child responds to various types of activities. Discovering how each child learns best will take a lot of time and energy, so be patient and over time your notes will reveal what works best. Your journal should also include notes on which objects and activities are most soothing to the child. At the front of the journal, list the parent's information about the special needs of each child, including notes about health, physical restrictions, diet restrictions, allergies, toileting, and on what triggers certain behaviors and how to best respond. Include anything the parent wants you to know about their child. You can gather this information at a separate meeting with the parent. Remember to take your cues from the child and from the parent as to what kind of day the child is having. This will help you know how to approach the child that day. The welcome is a very important time for children with cognitive disabilities. Let each child first get comfortable in the room and then go over the plan for the day on the picture schedule. This is a visual schedule for the day that helps children transition more smoothly from one activity to the next. Many children with cognitive disabilities struggle with transitioning to each next activity. Seeing the schedule board lets them know what is coming. It gives them a sense of control and prepares them for each transition. So be sure to follow the schedule you have chosen for the picture schedule board that day. Have the picture schedule cards displayed in order on some type of picture schedule board. Point to each of the picture schedule cards in order as you go over the schedule for today. Now have them open the treasure chest, which can be any small decorated box. As they open it, they discover a sticker or a hand stamp. This little gift not only introduces the story, but it engages the child right away. And it's a great distraction for a child who may be a bit nervous or hesitant at first. Then you teach them the whisper verse. The whisper verse will be repeated throughout the whole lesson. Many times it's the answer to a question you'll be asking them later. Knowing the whisper verse gives them confidence and helps them remember the aim or the story. You can use the sign language in the guide or you can make up your own motions. Once the child knows the whisper verse, he or she can join the others in free play until all the children have arrived. You will need to experiment to see what toys or activities work best for each child. After everyone has been given their stamp and taught the whisper verse, it's time for clearing away any toys used during free play. The cleanup song or one like it is a great way to help the children transition and cooperate in putting the toys away as they prepare for the next segment. Some teachers prefer not to introduce toys because putting them away can be too much of a challenge. So you'll need to experiment to see what works best for your children. Use the picture schedule to transition into the worship time. Have a child place the welcome card in the finished envelope. Explain that welcome time is finished and it's time for worship. 
During the worship segment for children with significant cognitive disabilities, you will need to stay very flexible. Ideally, children with cognitive disabilities join with other children their age to worship God together. Many times that is not possible because the child prefers to be in a quieter, less stimulating setting with one-on-one -on -one care. Either way, be sure that the child gets the opportunity to worship God, to give an offering, and to sing the Bible memory verse song and other songs that relate to the aim. Be creative in helping nonverbal children participate with musical instruments, clapping, and dancing. Remember that some children may be sensitive to noise and need noise reduction headphones. If the child is worshiping with all the children, he or she will get to watch an illustration. Younger children will watch the puppets, Delbert the donkey and Lello the lamb, while older children will watch live actors on various adventures. These characters introduce the Bible story and apply it to their situations. During worship, whether in a large group or a very small one, it's very important that the children see you worshiping God. They need to see that you are fully engaged in the singing, hand motions, prayer, in every aspect of worship. They will follow your lead and model your attitude. As you begin the word segment for children with cognitive disabilities, use the picture schedule to transition into the Bible time. Have a child place the worship card in the finished envelope. Explain that worship time is finished and it's time for the Bible story. Now it's time to get out your Bible. Treat it like a special treasure. You might reward a child for good behavior by having him get the Bible for you. Be sure to have some kind of visual. It can be a picture from a children's Bible, a coloring page, a sample of the craft, or a physical object that is mentioned in the story. To tell the children the Bible story, you can read the Watch the Word poem. If you prefer to put it in your own words, be sure to include each point from the poem. Some children are more able to focus if they are physically active. For these children, you might have them create a simple shape from Play-Doh that connects to the story as you tell the story. If you have a flannel board and Bible story characters, the children may enjoy putting the characters in place as you repeat the story. After they have heard the story from you, there are one or two questions. One is answered by the children repeating the whisper verse. The other answer is always found in your Bible. We want the children to know that the Bible is the place we go to find our answers. The questions are simple and the children will gain confidence in their understanding of the story. As you begin the way segment for children with cognitive disabilities, use the picture schedule to transition into the craft time. Have a child place the Bible card in the finished envelope. Explain that Bible time is finished and it's time for the craft. Some children may need hand-over-hand -hand assistance with the craft. So in that case, you would place your hand over his hand to guide the coloring or gluing. Keep in mind that the parent really prefers to see the craft that their child has created, no matter how simple, instead of one you do for them. You can adapt the craft to each child's ability, challenging some children with more details while simplifying it for others. Ask the discussion questions or retell the story to reinforce it as they work on their craft. Once the craft is completed, have a child place the craft card in the finished envelope. Explain that craft time is finished and it's prayer time. As you pray, touch each child on the shoulder as you say their name in prayer. For older children, you may want to add the Lord's Prayer. It can be helpful to create a word picture book with a picture for each phrase of the Lord's Prayer. You can show it to the children as you pray the Lord's Prayer aloud. After the prayer, have a child place the prayer card in the finished envelope. Explain that prayer time is finished and it's snack time. Before class, check with parents for dietary restrictions. Depending on the children in your care and the nature of their disabilities, you may decide it's best to omit the snack altogether. If you do serve a snack, ask the discussion questions as they eat. After they finish their snack, place the snack card in the finished envelope and explain that it's now game time. 
For games, you have many options of familiar, simple games that remain the same throughout the unit. The games reinforce the stories or the unit Bible memory verse. You may want to have a bin to keep all your game supplies in one place. Then at game time, you open the bin and choose a favorite. You continue to play as many of the games as you like until you have only five minutes remaining. At that point, you put away the games and have a child place the game card in the finished envelope. Explain that game time is finished and it's coloring time. Coloring time takes place during the final five minutes of class. As they color a picture of the Bible story, remind them to use their picture and their craft to explain the story to their families. Gather their craft with their take-home Bible study, which is an adaptation of the daily way. You may want to place these items along with any coloring they've done in one paper bag with their name on it. This version of the Daily Way has the Bible story passage, a prayer, and an activity for the child to enjoy with family members. It takes the Bible story and the aim into the home, and we are very excited about that. It is a tool to help the parent in taking the lead in guiding their child's spiritual growth. As the coloring is completed, or as parents arrive, have a child place the coloring card in the finished envelope. Explain that now it's time for going home. After all the children have gone home, be sure to make note in your teacher's journal about anything new you learned about each child today. Be sure to celebrate the little victories as well as the big ones. It's our hope that each child heads home, not only knowing a little more about who God is and what He has done, but having experienced God's love and His kindness along the way.